Keeping track of weather trends is important for meteorologists, but it can also benefit gardeners and farmers who use the data to help protect crops from pests and disease. It can be really easy to track your weather data on a spreadsheet or on your computer. But where do you download accurate and reliable weather data? In this video, I'll explore two ways. One is how to download current weather data using a personal weather station, and two, how to download current and historic weather data using trusted websites. If you're ready, let's dig in. If you have a personal weather station in your garden, it tracks the weather in your unique microclimate. So for example, if your garden is shady and sheltered and the local weather station miles away is measuring temperature in a sunny open field, there may be a very big difference in temperature, wind, and even rainfall. As a gardener or farmer who uses integrated pest management tools, you want the most accurate data for your ecosystem. In that case, a personal weather station is the way to go. There are lots of personal weather stations out there at a huge range of prices, and you don't need to buy the most expensive one, but here is what you do need. A weather station that gives you information about temperature, humidity, rainfall, wind speed, and wind direction. A weather station that can easily connect to Wi-Fi. A weather station that can retain at least 31 days of data so that you can download your information monthly rather than tracking your information every single day. And a weather system that makes it really easy to download your data. The unit I installed in my yard was Accurite's 5-in-1 weather station with direct to Wi-Fi display. It fit my requirements and it was also affordable, costing less than $200. Now, before you install any weather station, you have to think really carefully about where you put it in your yard. I asked Accurite's meteorologist, Carrie Strenfeld, to outline the main considerations. The, the first thing you consider is a, a wide area with a, a broad fetch, we call it. So um, there's no trees or fences obstructing, or buildings, houses, we're in the Bay Area, homes are really close here. You don't want any homes or buildings obstructing um, the wind. You want the most accurate wind measurements you can get. Um, you don't want to put the rain gauge under a, a tree with huge leaves or even the, the needle kind of leaves that um, are eventually going <laughs> to fill up your, your rain bucket, bucket and you're going to have to clean it out all the time. Um, and then you're not even going to get an accurate measurement of the rainfall. Um, the other thing that people don't think about is the surface. So I have weather stations on my roof and I have black shingles. But if you have that um, weather station mounted at least five feet away from those black shingles, you'll get enough ambient air um, that you're not just getting the heat pouring, you know, emulating off of that roof. Because um, as we know, black surfaces warm more than like a white or reflective surface. So, so temperature over a black roof will probably run higher than temperature over green natural grass or natural surface. For me, installing the weather station was pretty easy. I used the six screws provided to screw the unit onto a wooden post that was already up in my yard. I hooked it up to Wi-Fi in a matter of minutes. I downloaded Accurite's My Accurite app on my cell phone, and within an hour, the system was ready to go. Now, how do you download your monthly data? You need to access your account using your computer rather than a cell phone. So here's what you do. My information here, by the way, is in Celsius. With this My Accurite unit, you can change that to Fahrenheit by actually using the unit itself. Uh, the monitor will allow you to program in Fahrenheit if that's what you prefer. So when you get to myaccurate.com and you are in your dashboard, you can see the current temperature, the winds, the rainfall, but for a monthly details, I go to charts and details. I want to look back to see my information for the past 31 days. So I click 
on 31 days, and here it's plotted in a graph for me. Now, if I want, for instance, just the temperature high and temperature low, I can go along the graph and get that information day by day and, you know, type it into my spreadsheet. But if I want to download that information, I click on the download button, I put my date range, and the information will be emailed to me. The downside, however, is that with this Accurate account, it will send you a very detailed spreadsheet with your weather information every five minutes. Now for me, I just want the high temperatures and the low temperature on a given day. I don't need to know how it changes every five minutes. So for me, it might be easier to just grab the information out of this graph. That was showing us how we can collect information in our own backyard. Now, how do you download weather data for, for your location um, using online resources? The first website I'll show you is Weather Underground or Wonderground.com, and that gives you information from pretty much any location all over the world. First thing you need to do is choose Fahrenheit or Celsius for your data, whatever is relevant and you'll put in your location to find a nearby weather station. You'll then go here to find within your town or city the closest weather station to your location. So for me, I live not too far from Young and Eglinton, and I see that there is a weather station there. So that'll be closer to the weather in my backyard than, for instance, the weather at my local airport. Okay, so from there, it's giving me today's weather right now, and I want to click on History. For me, I prefer to get my information monthly, so I can go back to July 2020, and I want to see what the weather was like each day in July 2020. So you can scroll down past the summary, to daily observations, and this is absolutely beautiful. I get the weather for every single day in July, and I can put this in my spreadsheet. Now, they don't have a button that says download this information, but what you do is you select the information in the graph, you copy it, right like that, and you paste it into the spreadsheet, and it will look absolutely perfect this is what it will look like when you paste it in your spreadsheet. All the information you need. The next weather website I'm going to show you is the National Weather Service. This is perfect for you if you live in the United States. To find historic weather here, you're going to go and on the map, find your location. Once you get to the location, you will click on climate and past weather. You ask for a preliminary monthly climate data report, choose your location, and then go to archive data and whatever month you're looking for. Let's say June 2020. Now there is your report. It pops up right here on the screen. And again, you can copy and paste this into a spreadsheet and it should look absolutely perfect. Finally, if you're Canadian, you still have access to a really good website to get your official information. So you go to weather.gc.ca, click on past weather, click on historical data, write down what your location is, ask for data in the month you're interested in. So let's say I'm interested in July. The date doesn't really matter here because I'm going to get a monthly report. Just search. So here I can click on the weather station that is closest to me. And I want not hourly information, but daily information. Click on go. And here we go. Look at this, guys. 
we get our maximum daily temperature, our minimum daily temperature, our average daily temperature, all of this information here. Here, what's really nice is you actually can download the data using this box directly into your computer on a spreadsheet. So that's how to access and download weather data, both on the internet and using a personal weather station. If you want to learn how to use this information to help you protect your plants and trees from pests and diseases, you might want to check out my course on integrated pest management. It will help you if you're growing fruit trees, but it'll also help you if you're growing vegetables or berries and other crops because integrated pest management is all the same. The resources are just a little bit different depending on which crop you are uh, trying to protect. I've included lots of links and information in the text below this video, but in the meantime, I would love to know, where do you get your weather information? How do you record your weather data? And what experience have you had with personal weather stations? I want to hear all about it, so please leave that information in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.